Hi, this is the Great Me, and this is my Advanced Fury Warrior Tactics video. Maximizing your cooldown usage can have a major effect on your DPS. Ideally, you want to use your cooldowns as early in the fight as possible, but you also want to use them in conjunction with Heroism. My guild generally pops heroism early, so it's not really a problem for me, but you might need to work something out with the shamans in your guild. If you want to monitor your blood surge procs without watching your buffs, there's a couple ways to do that. One way, th which is the way that I use, is to create a custom event in scrolling combat text, and what you do is you go to custom events, you click new, and then you would make it look exactly like it is right now on the screen. Another way you can have an alert is by downloading the add-on called Slam Alert, which is what I used to use, but I personally like the SUT better. Your ability to deal with your rage generation plays a major role in maximizing your DPS. There are three stats that will help increase your rage generation. Those stats are crit, hit, and haste. Crit is the best stat in terms of rage generation because not only does it increase the rage as you get, it also increases all of your damage. After the yellow damage hit cap, hit and haste are equal in terms of rage generation and overall DPS increase. Another thing you can do to help your rage generation is to desynchronize your weapon swings. When you have two weapons that are the same speed, this is what it looks like when you want to attack. Because both weapons are hitting at the same time, this means that you're going to have really spiky rage generation. And that'll make it much easier for you to rage start yourself if you are not careful. If you want to desync your weapons, all you have to do is have your offhand unequipped when combat starts, and then re-equip it after one melee hit, just like that. But keep in mind that it will use a global cooldown when you re-equip your weapon. By desyncing your weapons like this, you will have much steadier rage generation. Also keep in mind that this is not exactly viable for fights that require you to move a lot and will cause you to get out of melee range for any given period of time because then it'll cause your weapons to go back to being synced. Although there are not a lot of boss encounters that require AoE DPS, knowing how to maximize it is still a useful skill to know. situation, this is how I prioritize my abilities. Depending on how many mobs are present, the use of Thunderclap can actually be viable DPS. For those of you who enjoy doing math, this is how you calculate your whirlwind damage. And this is how you calculate your Thunderclap damage. This is the equation that you need to use in order to determine the number of targets needed for a Thunderclap to do more damage than Whirlwind. And this is a graph showing the number of targets needed for a Thunderclap to be equal to or better than Whirlwind, depending on your attack power. Basically what this graph means is that Thunderclap scales better with attack power than Whirlwind and can be a viable part of your AoE DPS if enough targets are present. How you start your DPS rotation has a major effect on how often your cooldowns will get overlapped. For instance, if you start your rotation with a Whirlwind, this is what happens with your cooldowns.
And this is what happens when you start with Bloodthirst. What this means is that even though Whirlwind is more damage, it is actually better to start your DPS rotation with Bloodthirst. I hope this video helps you get better at playing a Fury Warrior. If you have any comments, questions, or feel like I've missed anything, please send me a tell in game or post a comment on this video. Shock.